Hey everyone, I'm Kevin with Victory 4x4. In today's video, we're gonna be installing the gas tank skid that you see here on our 2023 Chevy Colorado ZR2. So here you kind of can get a generalized look at all the parts you're gonna receive. We're gonna start out by grabbing this large main section of the skid right here and just setting this smaller, what will be the front section off to the side for now. So with the larger rear section of our skid here, as well as the three kind of rear mounting brackets, we'll kind of get started with bolting these to the skid and then show you how to get this up into place. So we'll start out with the mount you see here, which is gonna be the front inside mount or toward, in toward the center of the truck. That'll bolt in with the half inch button head hardware you see here. We're gonna do this now because it gets a little tight inside of here once everything is up on the truck. So you'll slip your button head bolts in from the outside and then install the serrated flange nuts on the inside. We'll just be threading these on kind of hand tight for now, just to the point that you still have a little bit of front to rear slotted adjustment there. You can then move to the rear inside mount, which will use this longer single hole leg again with a half inch button head through the bottom here. So we will have to just lift the skid up to get underneath there. And then we can install this from up top. So again, just kind of finger tight on that one so we can adjust it and move it around as needed. And then we can move to this outside rear mount. So here is that outside rear mount. You guys probably can guess by now that we're gonna install it with more half inch button head hardware. So again, sliding the mount out here to the inside of the angled flange on our skid. We'll get those two bolts in place. With this in, we have one last thing to do up at the front edge of the skid before this can be installed. So on the front edge, the two holes you see here are where we're gonna be bolting the two skid sections together. The way we do that is using this 5 16 hardware. So you have two 5 16 button heads and two of these clip nuts that need to be installed on the skid. You'll take these with the kind of longer threaded end facing up and just slide them over the front edge until they snap in to these holes and make sure that they kind of move around just a little bit there so that you know you have them snapped in correctly. We will just set this button head hardware off to the side. We just wanted to give you a quick look at the hardware you'll be using there. So up here on the truck, the bolt we'll be removing is this one you see here on the front of our rear slider mounting bracket. For this, we just need a 19 millimeter socket Now, if you were installing this kind of on a fresh truck, if you will, without any holes in the frame, without any sliders already installed, you would have to kind of get your skid installed loosely using the three main mounting brackets that you saw us install out there on the cart. And then using the skid as a guide, you would have to mark and drill this hole to 7 16 so that it would accept this half inch thread cutting bolt. Now, since we already have this one drilled and a thread cutter installed in this location, we can't really show you that process right here, but you will see us in just a moment install a couple thread cutting bolts. However, just in a smaller 3-8 size for that front portion of our skid plate. Additionally, just one more thing to point out here, we're gonna be mounting this skid to the bottom of this slider mounting leg so that we don't change the slider's orientation to the truck. If you don't have a slider on here, you'll just be mounting our skid right to the bottom of the frame. And we built in enough kind of adjustment to compensate for that there. So with all that being said, we're now gonna grab our transmission jack and get our skid placed up on top of there. We'll use that to lift it into place since we're working here on a vehicle lift or hoist. If you're doing this on the ground, in your driveway, in your garage, or on some jack stands, you can kind of achieve the same thing with a floor jack or two of them if you have that available. If you don't have that, just grab a friend to hopefully help you lift it up into place. 
So at this point, the skid itself is ready to be installed. Before we lift that into place, we do wanna get under there and show you how to install these two hardware backer plates. So a couple things you'll notice about these plates that are critical when getting them installed. The hole is offset in here just a little bit, so you want it in the orientation that offsets that up towards the top. And along those same lines, you'll see the wider radius corners. Those go down toward the bottom. Once you've got that in the correct orientation, you kind of just follow your gas tank straps up. There will be one front and one rear. You're basically looking to slide this plate in from the side and get it lined up with this large kind of square or rectangle, if you will, opening. So here on the back, we'll take that. You kind of have to go up over the top so that you can get behind this factory side heat shield. You'll then slide this down in. And then what you're looking to do is actually get it up and over top of this portion of the strap so that it can sit out nice and flat against the back side of this bracket. So once you have that one in there in the correct orientation, you can just jump up to the front take strap and repeat that process. So on this front one, it should be just a little bit easier to get installed since this mount is not recessed quite as far into the tank, but along the same lines, you just slide that in, let it drop into place, making sure it's out tight to the back side of this material, and then we can grab our skid and raise it into position. So we are raising our skid into position using a transmission jack since we have our truck up here on a vehicle lift. If you're doing this on jack stands or on the ground in your garage or your driveway, you can use a floor jack kind of in the same fashion to achieve the same thing here. So with that being said, as we lift this into position now, we're looking to line up the horizontal slot on our mounting bracket with the hole in the plate that we just installed here on the inside. Once you're confident in your alignment there, you'll need to find the 3 8 hex head bolts with washers as well as 3 8 serrated flange nuts in your bolt pack. The nut will need to be kind of fed down in behind that plate and lined up with your hole while the bolt can then be installed from the outside here. So just a couple things to note, we are gonna leave all of our mounting hardware loose at this time until everything is at least loosely started. You'll then repeat this process on that rear mount. That one, again, can be a little more tricky, so a couple tips to help you there. One, you could use kind of a small stick magnet to hold that nut and feed it down into position, or you could even just place it inside the box end of a wrench as you slip it down in behind the bracket. Once you have both bolts in along the inside, we can move next to this outside rear mount. So for this one, you wanna make sure you get it up tight to the frame and then slid forward so that it butts right up to the back of this rear tank mounting bracket. Once you have it kind of in that location, you may need to press in just a little bit so that you make sure you're on basically this nice flat surface of the frame and not out along this weld. And then you are going to have to mark and drill here. So I've got it in basically where the bracket is kind of even with the weld out along this edge so that we're getting nice clean material on the inside. And then I'm just gonna trace out this whole slot the best I can. You could technically center punch and drill through this bracket, kind of using it as a guide depending on the drill you have. But since our hardware is still kind of readily available down here on the bottom side, we'll just loosen this and get this bracket out of the way temporarily while we drill this hole. So hopefully you can see the mark up there where we're gonna mark and drill. The hardware we need to install here is a 3 8 self-tapping or thread cutting bolt that you can see here. So this is a flanged 3 8 bolt with a cutting end. In order to get these installed, we need to drill a hole out up here to 5 16 So as always, when drilling, we want to first center punch our hole. We're just gonna be aiming roughly for the center of our slotted mark. From there, we'll start with a small pilot hole. So I just have an eighth inch bit here to get us started. We'll line that up with our center punched mark and run this all the way through the frame. With our pilot hole drilled, again, we're now aiming for a 5 16 hole here. So you can see I have a step bit or a unibit, if you will, to get this drilled out. You can achieve the same thing with a conventional twist drill.
With that drilled out, you can then get your mounting bracket reinstalled to the skid. At this point, you'll need a 9 16th socket and an impact along with that 3 8 thread cutting bolt. You'll line that up with your hole through your bracket and then with a little bit of pressure on the impact, you can run this in cutting those 3 8 threads. With this all the way in, we're now just going to back it out a little bit so that again we have some adjustability as we continue on with this install. Moving now to that front section of the skid, we first need to come up here to this EVAP canister bracket and remove the front mounting bolt into this factory cross member. For this, you'll need a 13 mil socket. Now, if you guys are installing our gas tank skid with no other skids in place, such as the transfer case skid you can kind of see here, you can just reuse that factory mounting bolt in this location. However, if you're installing both our gas tank skid and a transfer case skid that uses that mounting hole. We provide you a longer M8 flanged hex head bolt along with a washer that you'll need to use when a pair of skids are combined in that location. So with our longer bolt in hand, we can grab the front section of the skid and get the bolt installed through this front mounting tab. With the front bolt installed and kind of supporting most of the weight of this skid section, you can come to the back and install those 5 16 button heads we mentioned earlier on into the clip nuts on the rear section of the skid. At this point, you'll want a 3 16 hex. I just have a hex driver on my impact here, but you could do the same with a conventional Allen wrench or a T-handle. You want to then work to line up both halves of your skid. So I'm just looking at the back edge of the skid here and how that aligns with the bend line on the rear section, as well as kind of where the bolts line up in the two slots, making sure that looks nice and even. That should get the two sections pretty much parallel, but aside from that, you'll have to kind of use your discretion and make sure that everything looks right to you as you're getting this installed. So once you're happy with the alignment there, you can use that 3 16 to snug these two up. And then we'll come to the outside here on the frame and drill a couple more holes. So out here, you'll see the mounting holes that now need to be marked and drilled, just like on that rear outside mounting bracket. In these three locations, you're again gonna be using 3 8 thread cutting hardware. You will see in our video that this hole is just a little bit oversized. That will be smaller for the production part. You're looking at a prototype part here. So expect these to all be the same size slotted hole. So the only difference in how we're doing these here versus that rear bracket is we're just gonna drill right through our skid using it as a guide. So instead of making marks and dropping it down out of the way, which you could do if you wanted to take the extra time to do that, we are just gonna come right in here to the center and center punch all three of these. Again, just like before, we're gonna start with a pilot hole. And then on these holes, I probably will grab a 5 16 conventional twist drill, just because the smaller diameter slot here, as we're using the skid as a guide, our unibit or step bit will kind of wind up oversized and actually wind up cutting into the skid a little bit as we're getting to that correct hole size. So we want to avoid that so that we don't damage the finish on here. And with all that in mind, we'll get all three of these drilled. From there, with our impact and our 9 16th socket once again, we can get all three of these installed.
Now that we have all of our hardware at least loosely started and installed, we can work our way around kind of tightening everything up. So I'll start out right here since we're working right in this area. So again, back here, it's your 916 socket for the top mounting bolt. And then the only piece of tooling I don't think we've mentioned to this point is the 516 hex that you'll need for the half inch button head hardware where all of these brackets connect to the skids. Here on the inside, again, it's your 516 hex for your button heads down here, and then the 916 socket for those 3 8 bolts up top. Just knowing that you may need to reach in and hold the nuts on really all of your hardware just as you get started so that they can bite in to that backing material. Once you have all of that hardware tightened up, this install is pretty much complete. So if you guys have any questions at all about this skid install or anything else we offer here at Victory 4x4, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can always send us an email at info at victory4x4.com or just give us a call at 269-459-8447.